Mayor Mad. Mayor Mad from... We don't know. All right. Um, let's play a Dutch. Rare, for sure, for me. All right, that's pretty tame start. So what's crossing my mind already is that I don't have to worry about their dark square bishop coming out and about here. Can be a disruptive piece, and also e4 in one swing. You know these i these variations where the centers opened up very fast. Uh, that doesn't seem like it will be the most precise way forward from for white from here. Could have probably thrown that move on before I shared those thoughts, but all right, this is where we are. Also. First things to thing to note that is under attack, and I could defend it in multiple ways. Boom, boom, boom. I'm leaning more towards e6. Excuse me, d6, because I want to create a duo with this pawn. I want to get this guy here. So, duos are a strength. I may even be looking forward to, uh, you know. An e4 fork. I think I want to begin with this. Yeah. It's a very flexible move. What I don't want to do is put the pawn here and create a big gap on e5. This knight's eyes will light up. This move can be prevented on white's next turn. This is the main one. This one is well, but that's not without its issues. So I'm able to get an e5, and I probably should do that straight away. Um, yeah, they're allowing me to create this duo. Let's do it. And now I am a step away. This is this is one of the things that I think about once I have established two pawns on my own fourth rank, pawn duo on my fourth rank. That next level, that next thing you can look forward to one day is establishing a space invader pawn. So I think their reaction is all right. Mm. Let's see how they they follow up. However, that is not the way to follow up. I don't think. I was thinking the way is to play e4, strike at this duo, immediate. Now, I think the assessment is that black is clearly better. This knight, its favorite square has been taken away because of this last move. The, this move, I imagine, is designed at stopping e4. But I'm... I'm satisfied if this duo simply sits. It's fine where, where they're at. So what am I looking at right now? I don't have a pawn on d6 anymore, and I don't think it's worthwhile to go forward with a fianchetto, which is something that may have come about if e3 wasn't played on move 2. Um, definitely leaning towards bishop on c5. I think it is the best square, so let's do it. A bishop on c5. It is unprotected, but no tricks to take advantage of it. I do have to be careful once I castle. I guess uh, that's what I'm signing up for when you play the Dutch. And you castle, you have to always be careful of this open diagonal. These two guys in particular can definitely cause some problems, so... I'm really only looking as far as bishop on c5, queen e7, and castles. I'm not quite sure where I want to go with this knight. I imagine this bishop will eventually go here. Some kind of bishop takes and then here, with double attack against my king and unprotected bishop can be nearby. So what they're looking at right now, I imagine, is the more direct stuff. Defend this pawn. I'm going to make this... Um, I'm going to make this move right here <laughs> and not give away any information yet with this knight. I'm not quite sure where it wants to go. If I play here straight away, maybe I have to 
be a little concerned about some pin. Bishop b5 right now, I could block with the pawn or the bishop. If this pawn moves, I'll lean more towards knight c6 because it has that d4 square. This move is almost always going to be met with f4, and then I have a huge outpost here on e3. So this knight, where are its forward moves? I'm not really, really concerned about that. Can't go to f4. If it goes here, it's not connected with anything on the white side. Castles check here. Knight g5 can actually be a bit disruptive since white hasn't castled kingside. Because h6 trying to scare the knight away can maybe be met with h4. Though maybe I could go ahead and capture. It's a little scary. The queen isn't easily able to make use of the h5 square with the pawn on f3. But still, I'm thinking a little bit less about uh, kingside castles right now. I wonder if there's a way I could control the c4 square. This really knocks out two key pieces. I also have to go faster. I could begin with bishop here. I could also maybe think about h6 first. It's really, is h6 really so bad? Mm, maybe knight c6 first. Yeah, tell you what, let's go with knight c6. Yeah, bishop b5, I could go here. I could go queenside. Why, why, am, I, why am I not thinking a bit more about queenside castles? Yeah, maybe I don't even go kingside. I, this is a completely open file, so I should have been thinking much sooner about castling queenside. Now, this, this is an open file, completely open file. And so I get that nice benefit of king safety and rook, activ act, rook activity in one swing. So this is, I guess, prep work for b4, or at the very least, it's uh, a controller controlling my knight and bishop. I don't want to see these pieces start to get kicked around. If I play this, maybe I don't want to castle queenside is the thing, but I guess we can't have it all. Maybe I go kingside. Mm. Castles, bishop check, king in the corner. Is that really something to be worrying about? Let's let's go with this first. I'm leaning more towards kingside castles now. <laughs> because this this side of the board can easily be opened up. We'll, we'll we'll see what kind of decision this guy makes. If this rook is no longer on this file, okay. I definitely want to stay on this diagonal. The knight is under control and vulnerable. A4 with tempo. Knights on these squares do not like being attacked by rook pawns. This is usually desirable moves. Boom. Boom. These kind of moves for both sides. All right, down three minutes. Usual case. Two, two healthy pawns on the fourth. Opponent's pawns are set back. As a result, their minor pieces feel a bit clumsy, and these guys stand well all on the third rank. So, still for the moment, my opponent is keeping me guessing as to which side of the board he'll go to. Now, after the knight is given a boot, the boot has to go to this square. It's the only safe square. Do it. And I think I'm just gonna castle. Actually, those earlier points I was making about bishop check, I could I can simply meet it with the bishop block. <laughs> that was also a possibility. Getting uh too sophisticated with this knight and bishop converging on these squares, I could immediately neutralize it. Though, no, maybe the bishop check, bishop there, the knight could still play here. It is supported. All right. I have a lead in development. This knight is clumsy. Both knights are not so, not so great. I could look at blasting open type of moves, e4. 
maybe F4 after there's a pin on the E pawn. Let's see what happens with the E3 pawn. Okay, the knight is going back. What do we do? How to improve? Be a developer. It's now the time to play for. Bishop e6. Continue to develop. All four miners on my third rank. Knights are pretty. Castles on board. Rook, where do you go? Open file. Keep this pawn there. Supported. This could be a little annoying. This is an interesting post for the knight. How would I react to this? Maybe that. Yeah, there. I'm, I'm going to go here. It's not a high quality move, but I, it's something fast. Some security here. May, maybe they're going for some aggressive move. I don't know, but I am back on the clock. I'm not quite sure how to break down this position. It's it's still compact. <laughs> I have space, but it's... I don't know. Maybe straight away going for a doubling on the D file was best. Instead of G6. Maybe could have done without that. If g4, how am I reacting? I might just throw the king in the corner. Chop, chop, and then I'm ready to fight on the g file. Should it open? My knight's given a push. Okay. Um, Let's go here. Oh, they're opening up that square for the knight, but maybe they end up in a pickle. Pin? There's no knight move with a check that would attack my unprotected bishop on c4. And because this rook stays here, you can't go here and be in a spot to recapture with the a pawn. So if you play with the b pawn, I could exchange and the a c pawns are isolated. I could look at this idea. Just seeing that one now. Just feels much cozier. So I'm going to go for this. So I've gained a little something structurally. They have they're gonna have split pawns. I'm not sure which it takes. So now that these guys are split and isolated, I could look at the squares immediately in front of those isolated pawns as homes for my pieces. So this one has my attention. C4. And I think I want to go in for it right now. This also crossed my mind here into here, but I'm exchanging off this knight for, yeah, I don't know if I want to really do that. I'm trying to sneak in like this. Here, here, I could maybe go for this kind of stuff, taking advantage of a pin. Evening out, evening out now on the clock. Tournament's over. <laughs> this guy ran away with it. JB2 mix. 47. Finishing on fire. What to note? What should white do? Occupy the d-file. Light square for the king is a little scary. Ready to slither in here. This, maybe I go ahead and win a pawn. Nah, I really, I don't know if I really want to do that. Try and pile up on this guy. Exchange knights. Put all my attention here. Win a pawn. This pawn controls their knight. I still like this duo. Fourth rank duo beats out the third rank duo. 
that move, I wanted to play this in reply to it. So now I could actually think about Mardel Plata type stuff structurally, even though it's way open on the uh, queen side. Lots of play here on the D and A file. There's probably more direct stuff happening here. So that knight, what is it threatening? Not really a whole lot. I could go ahead and throw them in a pickle. Pinaroni. And now this has my full attention. This kind of stuff. And they may not get out of it. Actually, I like this, this square better. Out of the night moves with tempo. I don't think it matters a whole lot. Also, now that this move is in, my bishop sees all the way down to that first rank. So in the event of some G file opening up, which I don't think is a good idea, uh, I'll have a much easier time of controlling the uh, open G file because I control that key pivot square. I don't think it's going to go in that direction. Also, these these kind of moves are still there. A pawn on g3 without this pawn on h2, these mating ideas are really, really close. Maybe, oh, this is an additional reason I'm now seeing a rook here. These kind of mating moves, a sacrifice here, rook h6 for mate. I'm controlling these two. So just like there's back rank mates, there can be a side file mate because of this control. So they are playing here. G4 giving me an opportunity to capture and open up the king side. Um, I could simply ignore it and double up. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna ignore it. Capture. It's unnecessary. I'm uh, I'm keying in on the the pinned knight. Knight takes knight. Knight takes knight. Or that. Both are probably tipping in my favor. These tricks here, I don't believe are working. Chop chop here. I could go here. Go here. There's pins. This knight's out of play. My king's cozy. They're at 30. Final seconds, I guess. Win on time. There's maybe too tame of a setup there for white, right? Move to E3. Not the most testing. Let's insist on this. I guess they're ready to uh they're ready to address this pin with bishop b3 just trying to be precise right to the very end oh actually there's this forget about it let's go here time winner okay not the greatest finish there for that game all right.